to get over the hurdle that she is black. This is how one person who works in Hollywood talked about marketing a film with a black star, and she wasn't the only one. In fact, many Hollywood workers talked about blackness as an obstacle to be overcome. But if this is how Hollywood workers talk about race, then what does it mean for people who work in the movie industry and for audiences everywhere? Hello, and thanks for joining me. I'm here to talk about my article, Racial Valuation, Cultural Gatekeepers, Race, Risk, and Institutional Expectations of Success and Failure. And in this article, I ask the question, how are racial hierarchies made in Hollywood and in culture industries broadly? And this is really an offshoot of my book, The Hollywood Jim Crow, which asks the same question and focuses on racial hierarchies among film directors. But here I focus more on the role of cultural intermediaries who are gatekeepers who decide what cultural products to exclude and to promote in the film industry. And race really matters in how cultural intermediaries talk about inequality and how they evaluate cultural products. And I talk about this in the concept of racial valuation. And this concept describes how cultural workers invoke race in their attempts to predict success and failure, what cultural products will be profitable and unprofitable, or are worthy or unworthy investments. In the cultural marketplace. And take, for example, the movie Annie. Annie was released in 2014. It made $134 million worldwide on a $65 million budget, which makes it pretty profitable. But how Hollywood workers talked about Annie was with the sense of a racialized failure expectation due to the Black star actress, Kavanzanae Wallace. For example, they talked about how being an African-American actress was a challenge for her, and even the idea that this challenge was especially explicit in foreign audiences and international audiences. For example, how Japanese audiences would receive African-American Annie was questionable, and also how to be a very tough film in Asia and also international audiences. And this is how they talked about the movie, given that there was a black star actress. But interestingly, they invoked a success expectation when they talked about the white Latino actress Cameron Diaz. So for example, the movie feels very black American, but our choice would be to include more Diaz as she is able to connect with people and more bits of her would be great. Another quote here is that Cameron Diaz will give the movie more movie appeal and it will get over the hurdle that the star actress is black. So here you have a racialized success expectation for a white actress and a failure expectation for a black actress. And I look at these correspondence between Hollywood intermediaries to understand how they talk about race. I use a content analysis of themes about race and economic risk and value to understand how they talk about these concepts in everyday work life. And what I get is this pattern that first they label the idea of risk in movies. And secondly, they use this idea of risk to mitigate risk, things like racial valuation. And that results in this hierarchy in terms of how we're thinking about inequality in Hollywood, where whiteness is labeled as low risk and blackness is labeled as high risk. And that results in these disparate outcomes. So in conclusion, race matters in Hollywood. It matters not only for film directors or actors, but also in how cultural workers in Hollywood discuss inequality and also how they then assign different values to black and white actors directors, producers, and so on. So their expectations about economic value and about race shape the production and distribution of cultural products. So the kinds of movies we see in the, in the theaters are very dependent upon these ideas and expectations that cultural workers have. And we can also question where else can we see racial valuation? We could see it in how real estate agents talk about neighborhoods. We could see it in a lot of other areas. So I think this concept could apply to other areas, not just sociology or economics, but more broadly, other areas, and can help us really understand more about how to overcome racism, anti-blackness, and racial inequality in the United States. 